Ladies and gentlemen, Violent Games here, coming at you with another Dishonored 2 build. Today, this one's going to be called The Acrobat. The Acrobat is going to take advantage of a non-lethal playstyle, where we're going to use high-speed momentum-based takedowns, as well as acrobatic-based takedowns as well, to deal with most of our enemies. We're not going to be using our tools that much, in all honesty, outside of using it to dispatch of clockwork soldiers, as well as use the occasional sleep dart should the occasion or fancy arise. It's worth mentioning that this build is really only viable for New Game Plus, because taking advantage of certain bone charms, as well as certain blueprints early on, is going to be very important here. So without further ado, let's get straight into the Acrobat build. Alright, let's talk about necessary abilities for this build. Now, I'm not going to be covering how many runes you're going to be needing, simply due to the fact you're playing on New Game Plus, you have enough runes anyhow. <laughs> let's just, just put it that way. So, first off, we're going to be grabbing all ranks of agility. Basically, because agility is going to be our bread and butter skill, the way we're going to be performing acrobatic takedowns, as well as high-speed momentum-based takedowns, is going to 100% rely on the agility tree. And not only that, but having Catfall is going to save us from us killing ourselves, really. So, next up, we're going to be grabbing reflexes, but only grab the base rank and adept parry. Don't grab the other ranks as I don't feel they're 100% necessary. On top of that, being able to reflect your enemy's bullets could actually wind up getting them killed. This is a non-lethal build. We don't want to accidentally kill one of our people, or one of our um, opponents, I should say. After that, you're going to be grabbing all ranks of Bone Charm Crafting. Bone Charms, 100%, guys, are the adhesive that holds this build together. It is 100% necessary that you have some Bone Charms in order for this build to be viable. Be sure to pay attention when I go into the Bone Charm segment, guys. It is literally how this build works. This build doesn't focus on supernatural powers as much as it does the raw effectiveness of certain bone charm compositions that that's a, a huge part of this build please pay attention to that so we're going to be grabbing all ranks of bone charm crafting so we can have 100 percent freedom of how we craft bone charms additionally early on in the game we're going to have access to all the bone charms that we've disenchanted in the past and that's going to allow us to form the bone charm composition we will need for this build to be viable and then finally we're just going to grab all ranks of vitality just to give a little bump to our health Literally, a part of this build is tanking, so having additional health is just kind of like an additional safety net, and it's also another place for us to throw ruins. And from there, guys, you can grab whatever you want from the ability stat line trees. It doesn't matter, but for in order to really get the playstyle of this build, guys, this is all you need. You don't need anything else, and that's kind of the cool part about this build is it has a very small rune investment, but a major bone charm investment, so I'm going to cover that coming up. Nail. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to move into the bone charm segment and we're going to start off with the most important bone charm for this build. Literally, if you were to ignore all other bone charms past here, you would actually probably still be okay and be able to play the game effectively. So this bone charm is actually a corrupt bone charm. So if you need to farm for it early on in the game, I actually encourage you to do so. This bone charm is called Witch's Skin. It's a corrupt bone charm that what it effectively does is damage that is normally done to your health is instead done to your mana. So what this effectively does is it turns you into a tank and allows you to sustain absurd amounts of damage. And not only that, but if you have a good mana sustain with this, you'll never run out of health it's kind of insane so after we grab witch's skin the next one i like to pick up is called strong arms this is going to allow us to choke out our enemies faster when we're trying to maintain a fast pace to our gameplay it's really difficult to have it slowed down by a slow choking animation having strong arms cuts it more than in half so i highly recommend picking this one up Following strong arms, I like to pick up Spirit Water. Spirit Water is going to basically allow us to restore our mana using any tap in the game, whether it's a beer tap, or a bathtub tap, or a kitchen sink tap. All taps will allow us to have unlimited mana. What that means for us in this build is that we're going to have basically unlimited health, and having such a highly available source of unlimited mana is just absurd. I recommend it every day of the week. It's wonderful. 
Then I like to grab Spirited. Spirited is literally just going to allow our Adermeyer Solutions to fully restore our mana pool. It's nice to have when our mana pool is our primary source for health for the most part. All right, next I like to grab Unsteady Hand. Unsteady Hand causes enemies to miss with projectiles more often. One way to sustain your life longer is to not receive as much damage, so Unsteady Hand is good for that reason alone. Up next is Swift Stalker. Now, Swift Stalker is one of those bone charms that is really going to define this playstyle and add some variety to it. What it does is when your weapon is sheathed, you get a movement speed increase. We are actually going to try to capitalize on this as much as possible. I encourage you, ladies and gentlemen, put down your arms and then slam people's heads into the concrete. Because that's where they put... No, but for, ser for serious right now. Swift Stalker is pretty fun in conjunction with um, agility. You know, the movement speed is just absurd. I absolutely love it. But I also like the fact that our build is also tanky. So it's like you're this hyper-mobile tank just slamming into people, jumping off of things, slamming their heads into the ground. It's, it's really fun and satisfying to someone who's played this game for a long time to still find some joy from one gimmicky mechanic as simple as put away weapon, move faster. I really, really enjoy it. It's a very fun bone charm. Up next, we have another swift ability called Swift Shadow. Now, Swift Shadow, literally all it does is increase our sneak movement speed, which is good because this build is anything but slow. So, having a slow sneak speed is just unacceptable, of course. So, Swift Shadow, thank you, thank you for existing. After that, a personal favorite of mine, Ground Glider. Being able to glide on the ground really quickly is is definitely preferable to, to gliding on the ground slowly, and it's also going to help us maintain the fastest momentum possible and allow us to get ground glide takedowns very, very easily. It's going to make that mechanic more responsive for us. So I like to pick up ground glider and it just max it out. It feels wonderful. Following Ground Glider, I like to pick up Relocation Sickness. This is a very build-specific ability because I don't find a lot of use for Relocation Sickness, but in this particular build, witches are a huge threat to you. It's kind of hard to just take them down with a lot of momentum-based takedowns due to the fact that they like to teleport around. What Relocation Sickness does is during that teleport animation, they can lose balance and actually fall to the ground. Hilariously enough, we can actually do an instant takedown if we catch them during the state while they are getting up. So Relocation Sickness is going to help us deal with one of the more threatening enemies in the game, and having this early on is really, really awesome. It makes dealing with witches way easier than it would have been otherwise. Alright, our final bone charm that we're going to be picking up is going to be called Shivering Silhouette. This is another corrupt bone charm. The effects of this is that enemies miss more often with ranged attacks. However, you are more visible to enemies. Since this isn't really a stealth-focused build, I don't find the negative aspect of it to be that effective. However, the positive aspect that enemies miss more often with their attacks definitely is noticeable. I just want to make sure that you guys are aware of this. Throughout me using this build, when I, when I equipped this for the first time, I wasn't expecting it to be as effective as it was. However, after seeing the effects of it, I definitely wanted to throw it into this build as a very effective bone charm for this playstyle. So that's all I got for you as far as bone charms. Let's move on into upgrades. Also, worthy of note, everything and every piece of information on this build will be posted in the description for your convenience. So as for our upgrades, I'm going to go into masterwork and base upgrades at the same time. Since we're playing on New Game Plus, we should have access as soon as you start the game. So first up, I like to grab Collector's Carapace. This is a masterwork upgrade. You use this to increase your overall damage resistance. This is really nice to have because tanking is definitely one of the key components of this build. Second off, I like to grab my Bone Charm slots. Buying both as soon as possible is 100% worth it since we're on New Game Plus. We have access to all of our old Bone Charms by maxing out our bone charm crafting tree we're going to be able to dismantle some of our excess runes from our previous playthroughs and construct all of our bone charms fully upgraded and ready to go from the very start of the game so having your bone charm slots early on really beneficial after that i like to grab silent running and sprint 
basically this is going to add variety to the ways we can take people down from sprinting we can run straight up behind an enemy and choke them out if we want to we can kind of jump from vertical point to vertical point above enemies really really quickly without alerting them with this so adding some variety to your playstyle is a great way to enhance the fun of your experience after that, I like to grab Instant Sleep Dart, simply because I wanted a little pocket tool to throw in there, though this build doesn't focus on tools or powers as much as just raw speed and takedown, but having Instant Sleep Dart is kind of a nice utility to have if you don't find it convenient to just do a bunch of jumps and stuff to take down your target or to parry and choke them out. I understand why you would want to do something like that instead, just an option. After that, I like to grab the crossbow upgrades just to ensure the delivery of my sleep dart is usually successful. We n and honestly, no, we won't be needing masterwork upgrades for the crossbow. While you can do it, it's optional, and to be honest, I think it kind of discourages the play style, so I almost don't recommend it. And then finally, we're going to be picking up Monkey Wrench. We're going to get this well before we ever see a Clockwork Soldier, simply due to the fact that we're playing on New Game Plus, like I said. Monkey Wrench is going to allow us to take down Clockwork Soldiers with our sword, which is going to be the whole reason we're going to be using it. The only way we're going to be attacking with our sword, in all honesty, is to take out Clockwork Soldiers. And since it doesn't count as a kill, it's, it's a non-lethal takedown, so... What's funny about this build, though, is that you can sustain pretty much all the damage the Clockwork Soldier dishes out and just swing wildly at them as long as you're managing your mana pool. So it's kind of hilarious in that aspect, though I think I kind of calculate my movements and you don't really get to see this as much. So that's all I really have to say for upgrades. I'm going to be moving on to my verdict in the build, and then we're going to be peacing out. So my verdict... On the acrobat build what how do i feel about my creation i actually really enjoyed this build i was pretty convinced that i was tired of non-lethal playthroughs after i saw mesmerize and slow time as options for doing a non-lethal build but once i saw the potential from witch's skin guys i had a blast constructing this build and playing it the way i did using nothing but momentum based takedowns and acrobatic takedowns as a focus was a lot of fun for me after i've been playing the game for such a long time so i think there's a lot of fun to be had here and it's viable it is viable for the highest difficulty settings in the game that being custom where your mana doesn't regenerate and enemies are very hyper alert and they do max damage this is you're perfectly safe here i think witch's skin has got you covered as long as you're playing on new game plus of course um one thing i learned from playing this build is that witch's skin is op oh my gosh that's one of the best bone charms in the game right there guys i'm telling you you could probably play with nothing but witch's skin and probably do relatively well in all honesty that's how powerful it is but I wanted to create something a little more unique and fun, so that's how I came up with this build. I hope y'all enjoyed. This is Violent Games, signing off.